nothing. We just know that if journalists do their work, it will be already a huge assistance for the current situation. Just describing the actual conditions of detention of Julian Assange, the difficulties he had on even remembering his birth date in his last hearing at Westminster's court because of the harshness of the conditions of detention that he's suffering, just making the public know that the special rapporteur on torture from the UN more, less than two weeks ago issued a statement declaring that the case of Julian Assange is a paramount of torture against an individual that has been going on for too long and has, must be immediately stopped. Just by relaying these elements which are factual, objective, which do not come from apparatus of power like the United Kingdom government or courts, but from civil society, but also international bodies that are that try to be at least as objective as possible on the situation. And just describing the factual dimension of the situation is already a great help. I don't see in the long standing how a civilized society could accept such treatment for journalists without uh, triggering revolt or gestures of extreme solidarity towards him. Second part of it. Second part of it. And regarding the political, I, I cannot, I cannot judge politically speaking the current situation. Yes, uh, well, uh, Hallo Dieselmann from German computer magazine CT. Uh, what is the current health condition of Julian Assange and what sort of medical treatment does he get? So, Niels Melzer, again, special rapporteur on torture, had access to him and described it very frankly as being one of the permanent cases of torture that he had seen in the sense of the effects that the conditions of detention he, he has been suffering have had on him. He's extremely weakened by the current situation by the, this isolation that has been imposed to him, by the violence and unfairness of the treatment that is inflicted to him. He has full capacity of reasoning still, and I have seen it by myself uh, through different kinds of exchanges. He's the same person I've always known as determined and as capable of understanding the current situation, but his capacity to resist from a physical perspective is at stake today. And I think it would be if we lose this person, if we lose Julian Assange in the current situation, I think it would be something that would wait on our consciousness for a long term. And I think we shouldn't wait not to take the risk because this risk is already being taken, but for the actual events to happen in order to mobilize ourselves and simply at all level try to sensibilize, sensi sensibilize people about what is going on make uh, the media understand that this was not something else than a case that was directed against his publication of the cable gate and Afghan and Iraq war logs in 2010. Today it is clear that it is the case because it has been admitted so in the United States and that his persecution was since the beginning the fruit of his action as a journalist. He has helped reveal war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in Iraq and Afghanistan and he's in prison for that in London. Tony Blair, who triggered those wars legally, is speaking at the website. So I would like you to think of the situation and the reason of why we're accepting this current dystopia. The conditions of detention of Julian Assange are extremely harsh. He's isolated 23 hours out of 24 in a cell of seven square meters. He has no contact with other inmates. He has the right to three social visits every week, which is an improvement compared to the previous situation. He has no access to computer, phones, television, or any link to the outer world. And it has been going on for maybe too long. This situation doesn't allow us to prepare his defense in good circumstances. Uh, the lawyers are required to come without documents. It is extremely difficult for him to sees the scope of this, case, of this case, which has been going on for years through a grand jury in the United States. We are being spied on, as the is revealed, or communications and exchanges with Julian Assange were seized by a company which was subcontracted by the CIA in the embassy. So the rights of the defense have been venerated, and this is something that will be added to the file in the coming weeks. We've been denied the basic rights 
to prepare our defense, including the necessary time to do so. In the last hearing at Westminster Court, there were more than 200 people demonstrating in front of the court, and as a consequence, the judge suggested that the next hearing should be held at Belmarsh Prison, at the tribunal next to Belmarsh Prison, in order to avoid public pressure. So we're really trying to break this isolation. I think uh, journalists should show solidarity with someone who has taken extreme risks to try to expose the truth. Uh, it is extremely important to show that in this case, the freedom of expression is at stake. Julian Assange to these publications from Wikileaks and many other outlets, as you might remember, the New York Times, the Guardian, and several others were partners in this work. And his prosecution and the terms of his prosecution could easily extend to the journalists who worked with him during these publications. I would like to add a few other elements before opening to questions. We're being pressured by the United Kingdom, who visibly want to left, leave this case away as soon as possible to shorten the proceedings. This puts a huge pressure on us, and the way they're pressuring us is mainly through creating these conditions of detention that are extremely harsh on Julian Assange. The idea, of course, is to make it very costly to ask for delays to actually prepare correctly the defense in order that the cost on Julian Assange would be so high that it would be difficult for us to ask for these delays and therefore be able to actually challenge the demands for extradition. As you know, there is a treaty for extradition between the UK and the US that prohibits extradition for political crimes. Espionage is considered by both UK and US as a political crime, so basically this procedure should not even exist. And it is so clearly written in law, we can all find this treaty of extradition which has been signed recently. And of course, the only reason of this persecution is political, it's revenge, uh, not only towards those revelations, but those that followed, including the ones on Vote 7, on the digital tools of the CIA to hack their targets. And as a consequence, uh, the solution would probably be political. As lawyers, we can only fight with the tools we have, which are very limited. It's a very modest and humble job. Gareth Pierce in the UK is leading this effort. There are more than 80 lawyers all over the world that are implicated to try to get this person out of this jail as soon as possible. And we really expect that there will be support from civil society, journalists, and so forth. If you feel that you're powerless, know that any sign that comes from foreign countries that indicate to the UK that this proceeding should be stopped immediately and Julian Assange would be free, should be free, is extremely important and could make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you mentioned Rui Pinto in the beginning, um, a Portuguese whistleblower is currently in a Lisbon jail. What would you, uh, as someone who is familiar with these sort of cases, what would you urge the Portuguese authorities to do in this case specifically? Or well, simply to make him free. <laughs> We're talking about people who have, who have, who have no interest, economical interest in the actions they, they follow, who have committed no kind of violence, who have attained to the dignity of no one, and they're in jail. These people have only exposed truth, documents that have happened to be verified and to have been perfectly sincere, not altered in any form. We don't see any reason for why they should be in this position. There is one reason, of course, is regarding in both cases, maybe a very strong power, whether it is the United States administration or the world of agents, the football scene, that are ready to use any tool available to try to crush those who have simply exposed their misbehavior. And it is as simple as that. And I, don't, I know it's not necessarily, a, from a media perspective, a scoop or something that could trigger excitement outside this room, but I think sometimes honor also in our work passes by just restating as, as often as necessary 
simple and blatant things as long as they haven't changed. And that's why I, I hope that even though, I mean, even though there, were, there have no been perceivable evolutions in the case in the last days, you will understand the importance of remembering the current situation and transmitting this information outside this place.